Hey everybody, this is Eli with Premiere on Script, and welcome to part two of this video series where we're going to be building an application that will allow us to control our Adobe app um, remotely through a web page uh, with a couple buttons um, where we can control the Adobe app from, say, our phone or a different desktop uh, or across the world. That's what we're going to be building today. And what we're going to be building looks like this. It's a really simple UI. You saw this in the previous uh, part one video with the demo, so I'm not going to go into too much, but um, we're going to have this button that will retrieve sequences that will then populate um, this select menu with all the sequences that are in our Premiere project. And then from there, we can select one, render it, uh, which will queue it back up for Premiere to send that over to Media Encoder. I have a full write-up on the kind of first part of this uh, at my website, Premiere on Script, uh, Control Premiere Remotely with WebSockets. You can go read this, but what I want to focus on on this page is this kind of design um, diagram down at the bottom. Because before we go in and start building this, this uh, application that's going to be powered by WebSockets, specifically the uh, library Socket.io, it's good to just kind of lay out our design first. That way we know what type of events we're triggering. The way Socket.io works and WebSockets in general works is you can emit events from different areas in the application. And then at other areas, say on the server and Premiere, you can emit an event from the web page and then listen to those uh, using dot on, uh, listen for those events and then pass them through or or trigger functions from those events. So I wanted to create a quick design that would lay out what those events names would be. That way I can reference them coming through uh, as I'm building this app. So uh, what we're gonna start off with is we're, we're gonna have a web page where we click that first button that we saw over here. And when we click that, we're gonna emit a retrieve sequences event. That's gonna get picked up by the server where then it, the server will pass on a request sequences P Pro event over to Premiere. Premiere will run all of its processing to uh, get all the sequences from there. It'll emit a sequence list event. Uh, the server will pick that up and then the server will emit a update sequence list event. You can see that we're also attaching data to these events. So we're sending the name and node ID of the sequence over. Uh, and then from there, we can select our, our sequence. We can press the render button and then um, these two events down here will be sent over back to Premiere. So the way this is working, you can see the design. It's it's we can't send something directly from the web page over to Premiere. We need the server to act as a middleman. And so in this first video, what we're going to do is start by setting up this middleman server component uh, where we're going to be hosting our web sockets. Um, in order to do this, we're going to build it out of Express.js and Socket.io, as I mentioned before. Express is just a quick way to set up a server uh, in Node. And if you're coming to this with a, a limited background of using Node before, maybe you've just uh, used you know, Adobe's APIs and scripting, uh, it's super easy to get started and we'll cover everything in this tutorial on how to get through all of this. So let's get started uh, writing some code. So I am going to come down here and in my desktop, I'm gonna create a new folder for our project. We'll call this Remote Adobe. And I'm going to drag that into Visual Studio Code. And now we have uh, our code environment. First thing we need to do is we'll set up a uh, two folders. We'll call one um, remote app and we'll call the other remote P Pro. So we're going to keep all of our server and web page uh, code inside this remote app folder. And we'll come back to remote P Pro later to build out our panel. Um, so within remote app, um, let's go to the terminal and we'll CD into that. And from here we can set up our, our server. So the first thing we need to do is we'll go npm init to create our package.json and we will go through all these things down here and they're all good author. Uh, that looks good. We'll start that and now we have a package.json file. Um, from here we will also not create a folder but we'll create a file. We'll name this index.js. Make sure that that's in the remote app folder. And now we have that all covered. So the first thing we want to do is, as I mentioned before, we're going to be using Express and Socket.io. So we need to download those packages from npm. So we'll come down to to the terminal and we'll do npm i 
express and then uh, socket.io. We'll let these install. And now that we have our two packages downloaded, we can see them in our dependencies uh, category here. Uh, and then we can go into index.js and we'll start writing up our server. All right, so step one, we have to import express. So we will require express here. And then from there, we're going to also create an express app. This is just creating the top level function uh, exported by express. And then from here, we can create our server. And we'll pass that app into that call. And then finally down here is where we're going to import our socket IO. And we will pass our server into socket IO. So now we have all of our libraries imported. We're going to specify a port number down here. And we'll call it 3333 for our local host. And then let's listen on that port. All right. So now that that's set up, we can give this a shot. We will save it and then go down to the terminal and we'll run npm start. And I don't think we've set that up yet. So let's come down here, remove this. And then we'll have the command be node index. And we'll save that. Come back over and then run npm start. And we will go. We'll see uh, what we're doing down here. Uh, 3333. Three, three, three. And something's up, but it can't get anything. That's cool. That's fine. Um, so we couldn't get anything there. So we'll come down here and we'll also add in a app.get. just so we can see that it's running. Cancel out, run it again. Reload this and we get a hello world. So our server is up and running there. That's good. Uh, we'll comment this out because we won't need that or we'll leave it there for now. Um, okay, so now that we have the server up, uh, now we can start going into our uh, socket settings. So to get into there, we are going to start kind of our socket listeners by doing socket on and we're going to listen for a connection event so anytime a remote kind of page is uh connects to the server that will trigger this event from there we will pass in a socket this passes in a socket on the other side so if we were to come to uh so we can log in here and say um on the connection we will log a socket id socket that id and that way we'll be able to see the unique id of whoever is connecting whatever is connecting with us uh, and now that we've got this all set up um next thing we have to do is add in those events that we talked about earlier so if we come back here and we see i lay these all out beforehand so that it's easy to reference and we don't have to like um we know what to pass in uh, on each side of these socket events so we're going to be listening and sending off a retrieve sequences and then a request sequence pre premiere pro um, and so we have two different categories we have stuff where we're passing uh, events from our web page to premiere and then times where we're passing events from premiere over to the web page so we'll categorize these
and that way we can see them later. And what we'll do is we'll start by listening to socket.on and request sequences. Um, there is no data associated with this event, so we don't have to pass any data into this function. It's just kind of a trigger. So then notice here I'm passing in, as I'm emitting events from the server, I'm, I'm using the IO object, not the socket. And we will do io.emit request sequences p pro. All right, got that. Uh, we can copy and paste this to do our next one, which is going to be the render. So the next one we're passing over render seek and render seek p pro, but we have data associated with this. So we have to pass data through. So we'll do render seek. And here we will pass in some data and then we will copy that down here and add p pro to the end there and also pass that data through. Uh, so there we have, uh, these are both of our, uh, the server acting as the middleman between events uh, for stuff being passed from web to Premiere. And then down here, uh, I'm going to copy this again. This next one will also have data. We're going sequence list and update sequence list. So list and copy this update sequence list. And we're passing data through there. And if we just restart this, um, we're not going to see anything. Like nothing's going to happen right now. If we were to come to the local host, besides that hello world we set up earlier. And that's because we're not passing anything to the web page. So this is all we have to do for the server. Um, really, this is just getting a server up, hosting socket IO on it, and then routing some events back and forth between uh, the two different places, the web page and Premiere acting as a middleman. So in the next movie, what we're going to do is we're going to send uh, more than just hello world over to the web page. We're going to send the whole setup so that we can begin interacting with our application uh, from the web page side. So I'm going to cut the movie here and then we will pick up uh, right here where we left off.